Judges chapter number 16, we'll be looking at verses 28 through 30. I want to read verse number 30. And Samson said, Let me die with the Philistines. And he bowed himself with all his might. And the house fell upon the lords and upon all the people that were therein. So the dead which he slew at his death were more than they which he slew in his life. Now I'm going to tell you something. I have never, ever liked the dark. I just don't like the dark. I don't like it because I don't see well in the dark. And it's hard for me to really have good vision of what's going on in the dark. Also, I don't like the dark because things are scarier in the dark. Now, I'm not afraid of the dark. I'm not scared of the dark, but I'm going to tell you things look a lot scarier in the dark. You know, a tree's a tree in the daylight, but it looks like a creepy fella in the night. Things are so dark. When it's dark, it's scary. I'm here to tell you I don't like the dark because if you stay too long in the dark, you know what will happen to you. You'll get all sad and depressed and down in the dumps. The dark just is not, I just don't like the dark. I like to be in the light. I think the church ought to be lit up. I think, I don't think we ought to come to the house of God in low lights like some bar or some club, but it ought to be bright and things lit up. I just don't like the dark. Now, of course, if you're familiar with your Bible, you know we're here dealing with the story of Samson. We're here the end of his life. Samson lived what I describe as the self life. Never forget Samson was chosen by God. Samson was anointed by God. Samson was strengthened by God. But Samson did everything that he did to please and to satisfy himself. He lived a self life. When we come to this text we find that Samson is in the darkest place he's ever been in his life. See they have blinded him. They took him and they poked out his eyes and he cannot see. I mean it's as dark as it's going to get and they bound him. Think about this. They bound him with feathers and chains that could never before hold him. Now I'm telling you if you're not careful, the devil will get a hold of you and what he'll wind up doing is binding you with the very things that never could hold you before. Samson is blind. Samson is bound and now they're dragging him out to their big coliseum and they're making sport out of Samson and they're belittling him. Hear me child of God you just keep living for God don't give the world an opportunity to spit in God's face because you've got caught in the dark Samson is in a dark place brought on by his self life but I'm here to tell you you can live for God you can do everything you want to for God sell out you can be a serving God and I promise you somewhere sometime you will wind up in a dark place. Life has a way of having you at times in a dark place. But I brought good news this morning. Even in your dark place through the life of Samson there is light in your dark place. It's not always just dark. There's light in your dark place. And for a few minutes I want to preach on that thought. There's light in your dark place. Now I don't know your way you're looking at me. None of y'all ever been in dark places but I've been in a few in my life and I needed to know that there was some light if you will at the end of the tunnel. There is light in your dark place. Look at verse 28 with me. Samson in his dark place called unto the Lord. I'm glad first of all I know that there's light because of my confidence because I can in my dark place call on the Lord. I know how it is to have your friends walk out on you. I know how it is to have your buddies stab you in the back. I know how it is to seem like you're all alone and no one knows where you are and no one cares. You pick the phone up and call somebody to try to talk to them about your dark place and they get off the phone. Any of y'all ever had this happen? They get off the phone like they're hanging off the side of a building. 
They're 40 floors up. You call. They reach in and get their phone. Say, hey, I'm hanging off the side of the building. I got to go. They don't care anything about you. But I'm glad even though Samson had brought on his problem, even though he was in the darkest place he'd ever be in his life, he could still call unto the Lord. He could still get a hold of God. No matter where you are, no matter what you've done, no matter how far away from God you may be, if you're in your dark place, you can be confident that you can call on God. Not only did he call unto the Lord, look again at verse 28 and said, O Lord God, remember me, I pray thee, and strengthen me, I pray thee. Not only could he be confident he could call on the Lord, but he could be confident he could count on the Lord. He could count on the Lord to not forget him. You ever been forgotten? You ever been looked over? You ever been not, uh, not even the second thought in somebody's life? I'm glad Samson, when he called on the Lord, the Lord said, I ain't forgot you. I know exactly where you are. I know you're down there in that dark place. Your eyes are gone. You're bound in chains. I know it feels like it's all over for you now. But Samson, I've not forgotten about you. I don't know who needs this this morning, but I come to tell somebody, no matter how dark it is. God knows exactly where you are. He will never forget you. I'm glad we serve a God who will never leave us or never forsake us. Come what may, no matter how bad it is, he said I will never forsake you. God has not forgotten about you. Now that may not ring in your bell like it does mine, but if you was born where I was born, come up in that neighborhood where I came up, to think that God, of all the big names that he could be worried about, of all the important things that God has to do. He's got time to never forget about little old me. That does something for me. That, that is light in my dark place that God will never forget me. But then he asked the Lord, would you strengthen me just one more time? Just one more time could I feel your power? God will not only for, not forget you, but he will never fail you. When Samson needed God's strength the most. He said, I've got to have it one more time, Lord. I know I've fumbled the ball. I know I've dropped the ball. I know I've not done what I'm supposed to do. But Lord, is there any way, just one more time, could you put the Holy Ghost on me? Could I have your strength one more time? God didn't say no. Goody, goody, goody. I'm sick and tired. I'm sick and tired and fed up my eyebrows. These preachers run around, talk about God like he's walking around behind us with a ball bat in his hand, waiting on us step on a crack so he can knock our brains out. God's more in love with you than that. Hallelujah. And when Samson from his dark place said, God, I need you to strengthen me one more time. I'm at the lowest place I've ever been. This is my last chance to be anything for God. I'm glad God didn't turn his back on him when he needed him the most. But God said, I'll strengthen you one more time. I'll be there with you. I'll never fail you. I'm glad we serve a God who's never let me down. God's been better to this old boy than I could ever tell you. God's been good to me. I've got sad stories but I ain't telling none of them. All I can tell you is come up the mountain top or the valley in the brightness of light or in my dark place. God has never failed. He never fails. I find light in my confidence. I can count on God. I can count on him. He can't always count on me, but I can count on him. I find light in my dark place, not only in the Samson's confidence, but in Samson's commitment. Go with me to verse number 30. In verse number 30, Samson said, Let me die with the Philistines. Now, I want you to watch Samson's commitment here. All Samson's life, Samson's done everything to stay alive. He's done everything he done to stay alive. He pleased the flesh. He took care of the flesh. He looked out for Samson. But every time there was trouble, all Samson did, he swelled up in the Holy Ghost and destroyed his enemies to keep himself alive. But now, chained to those two pillars with his hands on the, the columns of, the, of that big Colosseum, Samson prays something you never hear Samson pray. He said, let me die. Samson has finally figured something 
something out. You ever notice how you don't figure a whole lot of things out with God on the mountaintop or in the brightness of light, but when you get down there low and you get down there in that dark place, let me show you what Samson figured out. If you were to run over to Matthew chapter 16 and verse number 25, you'd found out that Jesus said, if a man shall find his life, he'll lose it. That's what Samson had done for 20 years. He had found his life. He was a superstar. He was a hero. He is world renowned, but he had lost it. He had no life. But in these last moments, Samson said, just let me die with the Philistines. Let me die with my enemy. He had found out that if a man would lose his life for Christ's sake, he'll find out what living is really all about. We run around and say, hey, I die for what I believe. I die for my faith. I die for the Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus ain't asking anybody in Kentucky to die for him. He's asking us to live for him, amen. But we ought to give our whole life to it. We ought to be willing to give up our dreams, give up our wishes, give up our wants, give up everything and say, I'm going to step right in the middle of where my enemies live. You ever wondered why you're the only Christian and they stick you down there where you, I, this used to happen to me. I worked for Nestle and they'd have a four-man crew. Ned put me with the four vulgarest speaking, yeah. sorriest lost people drinking, and I mean just foul mouth, and they'd stick me in there. Every once in a while, I'd get on a four man crew with four, before us preachers. We'd shout and sing and preach to one another, work all day. And I'd go home, I'd say, Lord, why can't it always be like that? Yeah. You ever wonder that? Why can't I work over there on the Christian side? I'll tell you what, too many of us run around shining light in each other's eyes now. I don't need the light. I'm walking in the light. But there's a dark world out there and your light will never shine brighter than when you're in that dark place. And you and I need to learn that sometime, hallelujah, God lets you get in that dark place so you can shine your light. What we ought to say is, Lord, let me lose my life for your sake so I really find out. I don't know if that's a helping you, but I needed that this morning find out what living is really all about he said let me die with the Philistines he hated them he tried to stay away from them every time he got around them he wanted to kill them and now he said let me die with them let me give my life right here just Lord I have finally figured it out confidence in his I mean light in his commitment he committed to the way of the Lord now listen Christianity by common sense standards may not make a whole lot of sense cause if you're gonna win you gotta lose if you're gonna live you gotta die Samson's just about to sing the old song I just started living standing there about to die hallelujah and he's singing I just found out what life was all about if you're going to be first you have to be last Samson didn't realize that he thought well if I'm first I'm first that's why God never could do what he, all he wanted to do with Samson because Samson was in the way. But right here, Samson has finally committed, hey, if I got to lose to win, I'm going to lose. If I got to die to live, I'm going to die. If I got to be last to be first, I want to be first in his eyes. I'm going to do it his way. Let me die with the Philistines. Continuing in verse number 30, not only did he commit to the way of the Lord, but he bowed himself with all his might. He, only, he not only committed to the way of the Lord, but he committed to the work of the Lord. This first time I realized in Samson's whole life that he gave it all he had. I mean, think about it. He is laid up in town doing something he shouldn't have been doing. And they surrounded the town and said, when he comes out, we're going to kill him. And Samson just walks out the back gate, picks up both of the bars, rips them up by the post, throws them up on his shoulder, and walks up on top of a mountain and sets them down. Never one time said he gasped for breath. Never one time said he about give out. Never one time said that he about fell on that load. It didn't take nothing for Samson just to yank those gates up and walk off with them. Didn't take Samson nothing to kill 30 men with his bare hands. I mean, 
mean, Samson knew nothing about having to give your all. And I'm afraid that you and I live in a day when folk want to have a good church, but they don't want to give all to it. And they want to be something for God, but they don't want to give it all their might. It's time you and I, as we say down there where I was born, do like that old hound dog. Just let our ears flap back. Let our tongue hang out and rear back and give it everything we got. We may not be much. We may not be able to do much, but we can do it 100%. My dad wasn't a preacher or a spiritual man. As you know, he is an old time, old school police officer. Old school. My daddy knew this. If you're going to do anything, you ought to do it with everything you got. You ought to try to be the best at it of anybody else. Don't be satisfied until you're the best. He used to, his favorite saying to me when I was growing up, he'd say, son, I don't know what you're going to be when you grow up, but if you're going to be a ditch digger, be the best ditch digger the man's got be on time every time and work and earn your money and I'm telling you I'm 51 years old my wife's sitting there can testify I've never worked a job where I had to back up to get a paycheck I've never looked down at the floor when I asked for a raise I've always tried to be as good as I could be and give it all I've got I passed it on to my children you may not be straight A students but you give it everything you got you may not be the most talented but you give it everything you got and I'd be a hypocrite I'd be a double hypocrite if I'd give work everything I got if I'd give the ball game everything I got if I'd give a skill everything I got and I didn't give God everything I had it may not be the best you ever heard I may not be your favorite preacher but I promise you I'm giving it everything I've got I'm studying as hard as I can I'm praying as hard as I can I'm preaching as hard as I can he tried so hard. Now look what it did to him now when he gave all that he had. You know what happened to him? He had to bow down. Hallelujah. Nowhere glory to God. Nowhere had Samson ever had to bow down. He had walked around for 20 years with a strut and his chest stuck out and he never had to go but about half speed to accomplish what he wanted to accomplish. But the minute he said, I'm committed to giving everything to the Lord. I promise you I can watch you if you walking around like an old peacock with your feathers all out look at me at everything I'm doing you ain't a giving it all you got cause the minute you give it all you got your head will bow down you'll realize who he is you'll see he must increase and I must decrease he committed to the work of the Lord. He gave it all he had. Watch it again. I'm trying to move on, but he bowed himself with all his might. He bowed himself. I can see him standing between those two pillars. He had to get way down low. You ever notice when you're the strongest for God? When you get way down low. The, you ever notice the smaller you get, the bigger God will make you. That's what happened to Samson. The more he bowed, the stronger he got, the more, I'm going to get to it. You just believe me. I'll show you. that, that he, Actually, I'll go ahead and tell you. He did more here than he did 20 years of his life. But he had to get bowed down. I know it's, some people say it's corny. But you say, I can't stand for God. You'll do better standing for God on your knees anyway. Bow down. Fall down before Him. We ain't got to always stand up and swell our chest out. Sometimes in that dark place, what we need to do is get low. Get down low. Good. Good. I see light in my dark place because of Samson's confidence. Because of his commitment. Now I call this last one because of his course. His, the course that he followed. Continue with me in verse 28. He bowed himself with all his might, and the house fell upon the Lord's, and upon all the people that were therein. So the dead which he slew, what's this phrase? At his death. The course he followed here is the course of Christ. Samson is more Christ-like in this very moment. He's, matter of fact, I think really this is about the only time in 20 years that Samson looks anything like Christ because he is willing here to die for his brethren. 
What he's doing is he's going to destroy all of these Philistines. He prayed for it. God, give me strength. All of this crowd. And I know the Bible says that there's 3,000 of them sitting up on the roof. I don't think he just killed 3,000. I think all the main folks of the army was in there. All the leadership and their families were in there. He crippled the whole nation of the Philistines. He did not destroy them. But if you read Samson's life, you know what the Bible says Samson's responsibility for God was? He was to begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of Philistines. It wasn't his job to deliver them. It was his job to begin. It took God 20 years to get Samson where he could finally do. Could you imagine if Samson had started out with this attitude, what all God could have done with him? If you'd get off your high horse, amen, and bow yourself down and be willing to give your life for somebody else. Be willing to go where others won't go. Be willing to live every once in a while in a dark place. Not throw in the towel. Not quit on God. Not get mad because your eyes got poked out and they bound you up and it's making sport of you and belittling you and folks are talking about you. I got news for you, friend. I found out in 29 years of preaching that book, if folk ain't talking about you, you better get bowed down because you ain't doing something right. I've been lied on, talked about, ridiculed, stabbed in the back. You know what I ought to do? I'll just bow my head and give it everything I got. I can't worry about what them on the roof are saying. Samson never one time mentions all all them people and what they're saying he comes out of his cell grinding at the mill tells that little boy let me feel the pillars Put my, he knew what he is up to he finally realized what God had called him and chose him and anointed him to do and in his dying moments he becomes more like Jesus it was Jesus who left heaven and came for a bunch of nobodies a bunch of no accounts and was willing to die for what you and I should have died for bear our sins in his own body now we, I was in a tent meeting Friday night over in Lebanon Junction and you can disagree with me if you want to but I think the greatest hymn that's ever been written is I stand amazed in the presence now you don't have to agree with that but get somewhere and look the words up that he took my sins and my sorrows and made them his very own Jesus said he's got a debt and if I don't pay it he'll have to pay it for eternity in a lake that burneth with fire I'll pay it and uh, Samson said I got brethren over there and if I don't fight this fight now if I don't kill this crowd now they'll go into my countrymen and they'll have to fight them and they're no match for these Philistines let me die with the Philistines and let me sacrifice what a sacrifice. Uh, let me just throw this in because I want to say it. I want to tell you the greatest love story I've been told. That Jesus loved me. Yeah, me. I've had folk look at me and say, I hate you. I say, but Jesus loved me. Hallelujah. Samson loved his brethren so much that is willing to do what they could not do so they wouldn't have to do it. And Jesus loved us so much he was willing to do what we could not do so we wouldn't have to try to do it so we wouldn't have to go to hell forever and forever. Samson was Christ-like. He followed the course of Christ in his sacrifice. But watch this and I'm finished. We see his course not only in his sacrifice. Look at verse 30 again. He said, So the dead which he slew at his death were more than they which he slew in his life. He did more dying than he ever did living. He died in just moments. He lived 20 years as a judge in Israel, the Bible says. The end of verse 31, had he judged Israel for, 30, uh, for 20 years. So for 20 years, he accomplished more dying than he ever did living. Now, I don't know how you look at it, but I believe Jesus accomplished more dying than he ever did living. Sure. Samson, just like Christ, he lived, uh, Jesus lived about three, three and a half years. 
He healed the blind. He made the lame to walk. He brought the dead back to life. He fed the multitudes. He healed all manner of diseases. He cast out devils. What a wonderful testimony. But many of those folks may have still been lost, may have still died in their sins. But hallelujah at Calvary. When he said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. He bowed his head in death. And it looked like he had lost. And he did more dying. Living, he loved me. But it was dying that he saved me buried he carried my sin far away rising he justified me freely forever thank God one of these days he's coming he's coming to get me coming to take me home with him Samson is a type of Christ because he did more dying than he ever did living he killed more at his death he did more for his brethren in the last few minutes here we are some 3400 years later and Samson is still known for how much he did for his brethren. The story of Jesus is still. What's the story of Jesus? The death. Without dying, we'd still be in our sins. It is the death, the burial, the resurrection that makes up the gospel. It's the, the, yes, it's his sinless life. Yes, he was a good healer. Yes, but those things would not have got it done. He had to die. Let me just say this. It wasn't second. Uh, it wasn't a second option. It wasn't plan B. Christ was the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. He came to die. And when Samson walked out from that grinding meal and he walked into that big coliseum and heard that crowd oh they jeered at him they called him a loser they made fun of him they did everything they could but Samson knew when he left that grinding meal he said God just one more time give me strength one more time I won't let you down this time I finally figured it out put my hands on the pillars that hold the coliseum and I'm gonna do what nobody else can do to the Philistines you call me to begin to deliver them and that's what I'm going to do and he bowed you notice when Jesus was dying you know what the Bible said he did he said in father into thy hands I commend my spirit and he bowed his head and gave up the ghost we probably get a whole lot more done for God if we learn to bow our head I may be in a dark place you may be in a dark place today but there's light in your dark place Amen. our heads are bowed our eyes are closed pastor you come but I just want to ask you I'm not trying to pump prime you I'm just asking you in a dark place can't see it's like your eyes are blinded something's got you bound <clears throat> you may have some belittling you say oh well I knew he wouldn't make it I knew he wouldn't last I tell you what, you can call on him. You can count on him. He'll never let you down. Maybe some of you need to just come and say, Lord, I, I need to spend more time bowed. Samson accomplished everything after he bowed himself. Father, I pray you take the truth of your word and the power of your spirit, the feeble effort of thy servant. Speak thy hearts do in these moments what only you can do. We'll thank you and bless you. We'll say Jesus did it all. To him be all glory. In Jesus' name and for his sake, Pastor Yuka. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcforums.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.